So yesterday, I crossed a movie off my watch list that's been sitting there for way too long. And that movie is Guillermo del Toro's 2006 dark fantasy, Pan's Labyrinth. A movie I've heard nothing but amazing things about, and for some reason, just never got around to watching it. That was until yesterday. And upon finishing it, I was left questioning the reality of Ophelia's fantasy, as I'm sure everyone did when the film first came out. So I wanted to take a look at the clues that support both sides to the question and give my opinion. Was this fantasy all in Ophelia's head to escape her harsh reality, or was it real? I know what you might be thinking, Guillermo del Toro has commented on this before. And while that is true, he did not necessarily state that his opinion was the right one. Del Toro did say that to him, the fairy tale was real. But that was just his interpretation. He also said that the movie was written and directed so everyone can make their own conclusion. And having a conclusion that was different than his does not mean that yours is wrong. Now, I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you've seen the movie before, so I don't need to give a complete recap of the film. But I will go into the premise of it before getting into both sides of this question. The movie starts off telling us the fantasy story of Princess Moana, whose father was the king of the underworld. Moana visits the human world where she is blinded by the sunlight and becomes immortal, and eventually she dies. Her father, the king, believes she will return one day in a different form, and builds labyrinths around the world in preparation for her return. After that, we jump ahead and into the human world. The story takes place in Spain in 1944, five years after the Spanish Civil War. Here we meet 11-year-old Ophelia and her pregnant mother, Carmen. They're on their way to join Captain Vidal. This is the father of Carmen's soon-to-be new child and Ophelia's stepfather. Ophelia's birth father used to work for Vidal, and he is said to have been killed during the war. Captain Vidal is being tasked with hunting down and taking out a group of rebels that are still holding out and fighting. During Ophelia's first night there, she's woken up by an insect, which transforms into a fairy and leads her through the labyrinth, where she meets a fawn who believes that she is the reincarnation of the princess. He gives her a book which will contain three goals that she has to complete for her to achieve immortality and return to the underworld as the princess. With that explained, we can now move on to the clues that represent both sides of the question of this being real. And I'll start with the side that it's all in her head. For starters, we learn early on that Ophelia loves to read, and specifically loves to read fantasy stories. We see Carmen tell her that she's too old for this in the first scene where they're together. And we see Ophelia read a tale to her unborn brother when Carmen isn't feeling well. So we know fantasy stories are already something that's always on her mind and something she really enjoys. I know I'm not the only one that has imagined how I'd survive in a fictional world that I'm a fan of. If you're a Game of Thrones or Walking Dead fan, I know you've imagined how you would survive. And that goes for really any fictional story or world. And of course, Ophelia is only 11, and likely has a strong imagination. Next, we have to remember Ophelia is not really all that happy with her current life. She's forced to be somewhere where she doesn't want to be, and she has a stepfather she doesn't like. And it's also clear the captain does not care for her. We see very early on how cold he is to Ophelia. When she first tries to greet him with a handshake, he sternly grabs her hand and tells her she used the wrong one before walking away. Es la otra mano, Ophelia. As viewers and Ophelia both quickly see how ruthless and evil Captain Vidal is. And we quickly learn how little he cares for Ophelia and even Carmen to an extent. She's just a means of him getting a son. His true care is really only about his unborn child. So we have an 11 year old girl living basically in a battle zone with a ruthless, unloving stepfather and a sick, bedridden mother. And this is one of the biggest reasons some fans believe it was all in her head. It's the motive Ophelia imagined this fantasy world to escape from her unfortunate, unhappy reality. This fantasy is the one thing that gave her hope for a better life and future. 
believing she could escape this bitter life she was living and instead be an immortal princess reunited with her real father. It's not far-fetched to think a child would make up this fantasy to make her day-to-day -day life a little bit better and a little bit more hopeful. But of course, the biggest piece of evidence to support this theory comes towards the end of the film. Ophelia is carrying out her final task, bring her now-born baby brother through the labyrinth to the fawn. So Ophelia sneaks into the captain's room and gets her brother, and as she is leaving, the captain sees her. So she runs, and Vidal chases after her. Ophelia is able to lose him at one point and get to the fawn. The fawn explains that the last step is sacrificing the blood of an innocent, aka her baby brother. But Ophelia refuses to hand her brother over to the fawn to be harmed. As the fawn argues with her and yells at Ophelia, Captain Vidal makes his way inside, and we see his point of view. And from his eyes, Ophelia is talking to no one. She is seen, but the fawn is nowhere to be found. Ophelia is the only one to ever interact with these underworld creatures, and the only time another character sees her interaction with them, he can't see it. So was it all in her head? Well, for this reason, many believe so, but many others, including myself, don't. I believe it was all real. Let's start off with explaining Captain Vidal not seeing the fawn. If we backtrack to when Ophelia broke into Captain Vidal's room to take her baby brother, we also saw her drug Vidal's drink. So later on, his point of view is unreliable because he's drugged and not fully aware of his surroundings. We normally see characters that get drugged and poisoned hallucinate and see things that aren't there. But what if this had the opposite effect on Vidal? He didn't see something that was there. We also have to remember Vidal has a disdain for these fairy tale stories. We saw him criticizing Carmen for allowing her child to read these stories and get attached to them. And we saw him scold Ophelia for believing them herself. So, with the alcohol and drugs in his system, it's not far-fetched to believe his mind blocked out something that he did not want to believe was there. A mix of denial along with the substances in his body. The use of the chalk to create doorways is a less reliable piece of evidence, but still useful. We saw Ophelia use this chalk twice, once while escaping the Pale Man and once while getting into the captain's room to get her brother. The reason I say it's more unreliable is because there technically is no way of knowing if either of those really happened. The first time she used it was to escape the room with the Pale Man chasing her. That entire sequence involved her, the fantasy world, and the fantasy creatures. There is no other human from the human world there. Which means if this is all in fact not real, that whole scene was in her head. The second time was getting into Vidal's room, in which we never actually saw her use the chalk to get inside. When the scene starts, she's already in the room, but the chalk is in her hand. But I think it's safe to assume that she did use it, because at the start of the scene, Vidal is in his room alone and the door is locked. There is no other realistic way of her getting inside without being seen by him, but I think the strongest piece of evidence is the mandrake root. During the film, we see the pregnant Carmen get ill, and it does not seem like the pregnancy is really going well. When Carmen is at her lowest point, the fawn gives Ophelia a mandrake root. The fawn tells her to keep it under Carmen's bed in a bowl of milk and regularly supply it with two drops of blood. Ophelia does this and Carmen immediately starts to get better. But later in the movie, Captain Vidal eventually catches Ophelia attending to the root, trying to supply it with more blood. He gets angry, calling it delusional, and Carmen convinces him to let her deal with it. Carmen throws the root into the fire, killing it, and immediately after develops painful contractions and goes into labor, dying during the process. I think this is too much of a coincidence to overlook. Carmen immediately got better upon the root being placed there, and immediately died upon the root's destruction. With Vidal being an unreliable eyewitness, along with the chalk, and especially the Mandrake, I think it's fair to say that everything that happened was in fact real. With that being said, I have another question. Does your emotional interpretation of the ending change based off of your opinion of this being real or not? After refusing to give her brother up, the fawn leaves and Ophelia returns the baby to Vidal. Afterward, the captain fatally shoots Ophelia before walking off. 
Of course, shortly after, we see the captain get killed, and the baby is rescued by Mercedes and the other rebels. Back in the labyrinth, a drop of Ophelia's blood falls onto an altar. We then see her appear in the underworld, dressed nicely and uninjured. The king, her real father, tells her by refusing to sacrifice an innocent and instead give up herself, she passed the final test. The fawn is also there, praising Ophelia for her correct choice, and her mom is there as the queen, inviting her to sit by her father's side and rule with him. Back in the human world, at the labyrinth, Ophelia starts to faintly smile before passing away from her gunshot wound. So, if you believe the fairy tale to be all in our head, then I guess this story as a whole and the ending is quite tragic. An innocent child murdered by her stepdad for a mission that was completely in her head. And even in her last moments, she believes she was going to the underworld, when in reality, she was a kid whose life was cut way too short, with nothing waiting for her afterward. Or you could be under the impression that although she wasn't going to the underworld, she was going to heaven, or an afterlife of some sort. She may not be going to be the princess of the underworld like she thought, but at least she's going to the afterlife to be with her mother and father. For me, as someone who believed the fairy tale to be real and not in her head, the ending is bittersweet. It's beautifully tragic. On one hand, she did accomplish her mission. Ophelia got to join the underworld and be with her mother and her real father, immortal as a princess of the underworld. She got to where she wanted to be. She got to the place that allowed her to be happier and be safe. But it will always be tragic that it happened through the death of her in the human world. That after doing what was the right thing, an innocent 11-year-old Ophelia had to be taken out by her sadistic stepfather. But as tragic as that is, if you believe the tale was real, then it was the best option for her. Because even with Vidal gone, there was not much of a good life for Ophelia to live with the rebels. She made it to the place where she wanted to be ever since she discovered it in the beginning of the film, and she got to be with her loved ones. So, although it's tragic that she passed away, it's kind of beautiful that she made it to her destination. That's it for my video guys, giving my interpretation of Pan's Labyrinth and the ending of the film. My opinion on whether it was real and how I felt about the ending. I think it was real, and I think it was a beautiful yet tragic ending. I really can't believe I pushed this movie off for so long because it instantly became a personal favorite of mine. Let me know what you guys think and how you guys interpret this movie. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.